Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. As the race to vaccinate all Americans continues, health officials say we're not out of the woods yet. Why we shouldn't let our guard down, even though millions of adults have been fully vaccinated. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 58 degrees to start your Easter Sunday. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday. Thank you so much for starting your day with us up dark and early today. Yeah, it's happy Easter. Happy Easter. You got the Easter colors. Look at us I know. all coordinating. This is fantastic. Easter. You're in the Easter <laughs> spirit. I should have brought some cascarones. You should this, have. This is oh my, my Easter God. tie. We could have gotten Max. I know. I thought about no. it this morning. I was like, God. I'm not going to lie. I thought about it because I think two Easters ago you got me. I did. Mm. I remember that. You have hit him under the desk. It was in my hair for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Max. All right, we have seen some areas of rain out there already this morning. A look outside, temperatures are in the upper 50s, so it is a little bit more mild than it was yesterday. Yesterday we were starting off in the low 50s, 65 though in Del Rio, the warm spot on the map. And as I mentioned, we have had some rain earlier this morning move through Bear County, and so you may notice that the roads are damp in spots if you're going out to an early church service this morning. Now, uh, across the hill country, you can see out near Curve, even in Edwards County, some more pronounced rainfall. But in Bear County, we've got one isolated shower here just east of 410 on the east side north of China Grove. That is pushing off to the north and to the east. And so today for your Easter Sunday forecast, we are going to carry a 20% chance for isolated rain, especially in the morning hours here. Uh, but again, your Easter Sunday should not be a washout. Most Easter egg hunts are going to be perfectly fine today. If you do happen upon a pop up shower. Just bring up the KSAT weather app. You can actually track the radar there with us. And in the afternoon, we'll see some sun, high temperature of 75. So a pretty nice Easter Sunday, other than dodging a few showers here and there. In the week ahead, though, boy, are we going to warm up. I'll show you high temperatures in the 90s and which days to watch out for those coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, crews investigating a house fire in the 5900 block of Bowsprit. Alicia Moretta is live there. Alicia, what can you tell us at this point? So we know four, a family of four was inside the home. The good news this morning is that they were all able to make it out safely. Uh, this happened a few hours ago. Firefighters have been on the scene. I spoke to Battalion Chief Brad May, and he tells me that the fire started in the living room area of the home. Again, the family was able to make it out. Right now we know this home is a total loss. Let me tell you, there were two adults inside, two children. Again, they made it out. Unfortunately, they are mourning the loss of, of their family pet. Uh, Battalion, Brad, Battalion Chief Brad May tells me that once firefighters got here this morning, the home was engulfed and there was really no way that they could safely make it out inside. So they had to fight this fire defensively, obviously, uh, also concerning some of their, focusing some of their efforts on the homes next door. The cars, he wasn't able to tell me if those are a total loss, but already they're estimating about $150,000 in damages. So the family will not be able to make it back in there anytime soon. They'll probably have to wait until this afternoon. Um, at this point, no cause. That's something that they're still investigating. And I'll speak with him again in just a few minutes to see if arson will be taking over this case. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, a man is dead this morning after police say he lost control of his vehicle and crashed into a tree. It happened around 2.30 this morning in the 11,200 block of Apple White Road. Police say the driver was pronounced dead at the scene. A woman in her late teens in the passenger seat was taken to University Hospital and is in critical condition. Police believe speed was a factor in the crash. Police also investigating another crash that ended with two drivers in the hospital. Take a look. This happened around 1.30 this morning at Loop 410 and Wurzbach. Police on the scene telling us it was a two vehicle crash. The collision caused one driver to lose control and then hit the median. The driver of that vehicle taken to a nearby hospital with non life threatening injuries. The other driver was able to pull over, also taken to the hospital. 
Texas is expected to get an additional 2.5 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine next week. This is according to the Department of State Health Services. Metro Health will get 300 doses of Moderna, more than 12,000 doses of Pfizer, and 6,000 doses of Johnson & Johnson. University Health will get more than 19,000 doses of Pfizer, and WellMed will have more than 7,000 doses of Pfizer. And Americans observing another Easter holiday amid this pandemic. But unlike last year, there are signs of hope and recovery. Still, health officials are urging people to proceed with caution because cases are heading in the wrong direction in several states. ABC's Ty Hernandez has a story. On this Easter weekend, health officials are concerned family gatherings could lead to another surge in cases of COVID-19. Anytime we let our mask down, our guard down, or have unvaccinated people gathering, we're really looking for trouble. The CDC's new guidance saying fully vaccinated travelers who wear masks and social distance can fly at low risk to themselves. But cases are still on the rise. In the last two weeks, the number of daily COVID infections jumping 20 percent. Michigan reporting more than 8,500 new cases Saturday, its highest daily case total since December. By the recent numbers, um, we know we've got a bit of a reality check. But there's good news. In hard-hit Los Angeles County, the number of people hospitalized continues to decline, dropping below 600. Meantime, a new milestone in the vaccine rollout. The U.S. now averaging more than 3 million shots a day. Dr. Anthony Fauci on CNN encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. It will give you a freedom of getting back to some degree of normality. And in New York City, a slight return to normality as Broadway's famous St. James Theatre holds a performance for the first time in more than a year. I feel anxious, but I usually saw a show a week, so this is great to be back since I haven't, the last show I saw was March 8th, 2020. The performance taking place before a masked, socially distanced crowd. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, Noah Green, the man who rammed a car into two officers outside the U.S. Capitol, had been suffering from delusions, paranoia, and suicidal thoughts. That's according to a U.S. official. The official was not authorized to speak publicly about the ongoing investigation. Investigators are focused on Green's mental health as they work to identify any motive for the attack. And the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, declaring a state of emergency in Florida after a significant leak at a large storage pond of wastewater that's now threatening to flood roads and burst the system that stores polluted water. Officials in Florida were evacuating more than 300 homes and an entire highway in the Tampa area. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection says a break was detected in one of the walls of a pond holding millions of gallons of water containing phosphorus and nitrogen from an old phosphate plant. Officials are mostly concerned that the water could flood the entire area. Well, data from more than 500 million Facebook users have been found on a website for hackers. The information appears to be several years old, but it is another example of the vast amount of information collected by Facebook and other social media sites. The availability of the data set was first reported by Business Insider. Some of the information included in the data is phone numbers, Facebook IDs, full names, locations, birth dates, and email addresses. All right, time now is 6.08, 58 degrees out. Goes first go. It has been a tough stretch of overtime losses. We're gonna explain what happened last night and what comes next for the silver and black. And the Tower of Americas is holding an Easter egg hunt. Oh. What families can expect at the egg extravaganza event that's happening today. See what they did there? Egg extravaganza. Mm -hmm. mm. mm -hmm. And taking a live look out there, like we said, 58 degrees. What does the rest of your Easter Sunday look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Easter Sunday. So as a reminder, the Archdiocese of San Antonio easing social distancing protocols. Churches will open all pews and reduce social distancing requirements from six feet to only three feet. But remember, face masks are required and there will be thorough cleanings throughout the church. This comes as parishes are preparing for Easter masses and of course celebrations. The Tower of Americas is hosting an Easter egg extravaganza today at the base of the tower. The event will take place from 11 a.m. until 5 in the afternoon. Families can enjoy face painting, egg dyeing, a coloring station, and a petting zoo. The Easter egg hunt starts at noon. 
Again, at 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., the event is free to the public, and there may even be a special visit from Whoa. the Easter Bunny. Watch out. For more information, just go to ksat.com. Do you guys have any good plans outside today? I'm just going to hang out with my peeps. <laughs> Wait, or like the actual peeps actual or your peeps. friends? Actual peeps. We'll see. But Do you I'm guys eat like peeps? I like peeps. Some people think they're trash. You see all the trash peeps memes, and I'm like, no, I think like one or two. I enjoy them. Yeah, Why not? God. Why not? Yeah. Just a spoonful of sugar. We look like peeps. You know, today, <laughs> <laughs> you guys do. Today, we are not going to be seeing a ton of rain out there, but we will have to carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower, maybe even a rumble of thunder in some places. But again, the vast majority of us will not see any rain today. Unfortunately, we need rain, but you know, it's a big day to enjoy some time outdoors. So I guess it's good that our chance for rain is only 20% today, at least in San Antonio, 58 degrees out there cloudy. We've already seen a storm earlier this morning work its way through uh, the airport, picked up about five hundredths of an inch of rain. So a little bit more than yesterday, but still not a ton. It's 56 in Kerrville, 56 in Bandera, 57 in Tarpley. It's 59 at Stinson, 56 in Seguin, and 57 in New Braunfels. On the radar, most of the rain right now is up in the hill country, and even then it's pretty spotty. We did have a thunderstorm work its way through Junction in Fredericksburg, and these will push on off to the Austin area and the Blanco area uh, this morning. Meanwhile, though, near Kerrville, we are seeing some lingering showers work their way through Hunt, Ingram, and Kerrville itself in Kirk County. And off to the east into Comal County, you can see a good heavy downpour just past uh, 281, and it's heading just north of Canyon Lake and south of Fisher. Uh, and so that'll continue to push on off uh, to the east likely just south of Wimberley in San Antonio. It's really only a couple of splash and dash quick showers on the east side of town right now, just to the north of China Grove, just to the east of 410 on the south side and just to the east of Calaveras Lake. Uh, but those are pushing into Wilson County and again, pretty spotty as far as the rain is concerned. In fact, it was a little bit heavier earlier in the overnight hours. All of this rain is because of this upper level low, which is currently just to our north and it's going to be moving across Texas today. So look at the future cast. The better chances for rain are north of Highway 90. And even then, again, it's only a 20% chance for an isolated shower, perhaps a rumble of thunder, only 20% north of Highway 90. And into the afternoon, we're still going to see clouds hang around right at around uh, lunch. That's when we'll start to see a few breaks in the clouds, and it's going to be a really pleasant afternoon with even less of a chance for rain later in the afternoon, only 10% for a stray shower in the afternoon. So if you are planning on enjoying an Easter egg hunt, uh, if you want to be super safe, better safe than sorry, wait until the afternoon. But even then, again, those showers are only isolated at best out there this morning. High temperatures should be in the mid 70s around San Antonio, upper 70s toward Del Rio, even the 80s down near Laredo. Then looking ahead, we're slowly going to see the humidity rise by the middle of the week. Our dew points will be in the 60s, which is very muggy. You'll feel the humidity by Tuesday lasting through Friday. And on top of that, temperatures are going to climb too. We'll be up to 93 degrees by Thursday for the forecast. Some places in the case that 12 viewing area have the potential to get up to 100 degrees on Thursday for the first time this year. Del Rio, I'm looking at you. All right, today, just a reminder, cloudy at 10, cloudy at noon, 20% chance for an isolated shower in the first part of the day here. Then we'll see some sun in the afternoon, 75 for Easter Sunday. I love the view of San Fernando Cathedral in the background uh, this Easter Sunday. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then a look ahead to the week. Woo, it's going to get toasty. Temperatures are going to be in the 90s. Hey, coming up in the next half hour, I'll give you pretty much an hour by hour breakdown of the best time to go Easter egg hunting today. We should have done an Easter egg hunt in the studio. We still have time. I know. Right. Between the three of us. Thanks. <laughs> I know. Why are y'all pretending like the morning is over? We still got another hour and 43 minutes. That's right. Who's counting? 617, 58 degrees out. Well, still ahead, the latest in the college admission scandal where mm. Massimo Giannulli could be going before reuniting with his family. And a famous rapper on life support after a heart attack. What his friend is now saying about the medical episode.
Well, in your entertainment news, Lori Loughlin's husband, Massimo Giannulli, has been released from prison early after serving nearly five months behind bars, according to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, prisons records. Julie Giannulli has been moved out of the correctional facility in California. The fashion designer is now under supervised release, which could mean home confinement or transfer to a halfway house. And rapper DMX reportedly hospitalized and on life support after a reported heart attack. The 50 year old recording star, whose real name is Earl Simmons, rushed to a hospital in White Plains, New York, Friday. Now, DMX released his first record back in 1998. He has charted five number one albums, according to Billboard. Now, his longtime attorney and friend could not confirm reports that the heart attack may have been triggered by a drug overdose. Mm. Time now is 621, 58 degrees out. All right, 133 points in overtime. What an exciting night for the Silver and Black, but sadly, not enough to get the W. We're going to explain next. Good morning and welcome back. After a day off, the Spurs are back at it at home at the AT&T Center hosting the Indiana Pacers, looking for just the third win in this historic nine-game homestand. Let's roll the highlights. Derek White starting off hot from distance. Two straight threes from Derek. He had a career night on Thursday. Then a few plays later, Patty Mills draining the triple of his own. San Antonio would lead 33-32 after one. Devin Vassell, the rookie, giving Spurs some breathing room early with 36-32. That's the first. Whew. Then, a little later, Keldon Johnson, there he is, muscles his way into the basket for a lay-in. Indiana outscoring the Spurs 35-26 in the quarter to take control, close the quarter with a floater from Karis LeVert. Two-tenths of a second left on the clock, Whew. leading the halftime, 67-59. Third quarter, off the miss, wait for it, wait for it. Here he comes, big man Jacopotl with the strong finish. There you go. Counted and one. He would hit the free throw. Pull the Spurs within two. Then DeMar DeRozan giving San Antonio the lead. Back on the jumper. 78-76. Bless you. But San Antonio trailing 98-97. Heading to the fourth quarter. Spurs down by six with a little over three minutes left to go. There we go. You just saw it right there. Rudy Gay with the tomahawk jam. Rudy had 11 in the fourth, but we are tied 126 at the end of regulation. So now we go to overtime. And here we go, the man, the myth, the legend, T.J. McConnell, Arizona, and the Sixers. He scored six of Indiana's 13 points in OT. San Antonio losing their second straight overtime game, 139-133. to 133. Can't give up 139 points. The margin of error is too small. We had some good shots, uh, just like the Atlanta game, to stay in it, to win it. They didn't go down, but you can't control that. So if the shots don't go down, you can't turn it over as much. You can't let somebody get away from us like McConnell, and we did. So the 139 points killed us. End of story. There you go. They showed a lot of fight, and we are far from done. Next up tomorrow night, staying here at home, this nine-game homestand, 6 o'clock, hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. You had three whoops in there. It was a heck of a game. Overtime. You, I, you haven't done that in a while. You should have heard me after the Hawks game. We had four double OT. It's a whoop every half. Whoop. Whoop. All right, 627, 58 degrees. Well, the CDC says nearly 40% of American adults have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Why health officials are still concerned. Plus, a lot of businesses closed today because of Easter. We have a list of some of the places still open after the break. Good morning, welcome back and happy Easter Sunday. 6.30 this morning, April 4th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. We're in the Easter spirit. Absolutely, you have to be. We, we talked mask? about this yesterday. You said, what are we going to wear for Easter? To be fair, this is my annual Easter tie. Oh. I only wear this on Easter. Sarah Spivey. Sarah Spivey also looking fabulous this Easter well, Sunday. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that one. That was good. I liked it. It works. Thanks. Um, before the break, I promised you that I would give you an Easter egg hunt forecast. So, hoppy Easter, everyone. You can see the bunny hopping there. All right. Well, we are going to have a few areas of showers, isolated showers, isolated showers, 20% this morning. 
for a spotty shower or two. So by and large, Easter egg hunts will not be interrupted this morning. But if you want to be extra safe in the afternoon, our rain chances go down to 10% this afternoon. And we'll see temperatures slowly rise in the afternoon to about 75 degrees for the afternoon high temperature. Thanks, dude. You did a great job. All right, here on the radar, we do have some rain, especially up in the hill country. Even a couple of flashes of lightning in western Kerr County right now. A good shield of rain from Fredericksburg down to Kerrville in that Hunt Ingram area. These are quick passing showers that are pushing off to the east pretty quickly quickly. Uh, one is a little bit heavier out in Comal County, though, just to the north of Canyon Lake between Fisher and Canyon Lake. Again, moving off to the east. No lightning with that detected, just a heavy downpour. And then on the east side of Bear County, right on the eastern edge of Loop 1604, we've got a shower there. This one is pushing into Wilson County, just to the south of Lavernia. So as you can see, we've already got a few isolated showers out there. That is going to be the case today. But how do our rain chances look in the week ahead and just how warm will we get? I've got a look at that forecast coming up. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a family's home damaged after flames broke out. More than a dozen fire units were responding to the 5900 block of Bowsprit around 4 this morning. Our Alicia Beretta is live from the scene with the latest. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, really, there was no way that firefighters could actually make it inside the home by the time they got here to try to save anything. And unfortunately, this home has been deemed a total loss by fire crews. There's a literally no roof. We know that fire started in the living room area. That's according to firefighters on the scene. And it may be a little hard to tell right now, but if you pay close attention and with those flashes of light, you can see it's completely shredded. There's nothing left there. Battalion Chief Brad May says the family was inside when the the fire started this morning. Two adults and two children were able to make it out without any injury, but of course they're shaken up. They're seeing all this damage. They saw their home and everything they own just be destroyed in minutes. And Battalion Chief Brad May tells me the victims are also mourning the loss of their family pet. One of the challenging factors for firefighters this morning was that the flames were so intense that at one point the home on the right side was at risk of catching fire too. So they're still monitoring that area. Actually, just a few uh, seconds ago, one of those recycling bins or trash cans caught fire again. Right now, no cause has been determined, uh, but they tell me that they don't suspect any foul play. So it is still under investigation. And I guess the only good news this morning is that the family is okay. Reporting live from the city southwest side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, this month marks two years of the death of Tito Bradshaw, a cyclist who was killed in the 1900 block of East Houston Street by a woman who was under the influence of alcohol. Uh, that woman has since been out of jail on bail and is awaiting trial. The pandemic prolonging a set date. Jennifer Pena, the mother of Tito Bradshaw's son, says it's been two years too long since Bradshaw was hit while riding his bicycle by this woman, Linda Collier Mason. Mason was arrested at the scene of suspicion of intoxication assault, but that charge was later upgraded to intoxication manslaughter once Bradshaw died from his injuries. Bradshaw's family is hopeful of a trial as soon as next month. I know that it's set for May, so if this could be just be done in May, you know, that would bring us some relief, some closure that, you know, she's behind bars and she's not out possibly drinking and driving. Pena says because of the delays, they've done everything they can to stay up to speed on the status of Mason's case. All Bear County courts are scheduled to reopen on Monday. Bradshaw's family hoping that justice will finally be served. Now to the latest on the pandemic. As states relax coronavirus restrictions, there is good news on the vaccine front. New numbers from the CDC show nearly 40% of American adults have received their first dose of the coronavirus vaccine. But as CNN's Polo Sandoval reports, health officials continue to warn about a rise in new cases. First, the promising news. The total number of people who have been administered at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine exceeded 100 million in shots. They're going into arms at a seven-day average rate of about 3 million a day, touts the White House. The CDC is also out with much-anticipated guidance announcing the roughly 18% of Americans that are fully vaccinated should feel safe while traveling 
eliminating some testing and quarantine recommendations. The CDC also issued guidance saying it's safe for vaccinated people to gather indoors this Easter. The rest are still advised to keep celebrations outside and within the household. But with more than three quarters of the country still not fully protected by a vaccine, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky is still advising against non-essential travel. And while we believe that fully vaccinated people can travel at low risk to themselves, CDC is not recommending travel at this time due to the rising number of cases. And that's what worries health officials, especially with the increasing number of viral variants. This week, Michigan confirmed its first patient infected with the mutation of the virus first reported in Brazil. But it's a dreaded B117 variant that has Michigan hospitals dealing with another patient spike. We haven't abandoned our protocols. It's just that we've got a higher proportion of variants. And part of that is people getting tired. Um, there's fatigue and there's variants and there's more travel. And that's some of what the story is here for sure. Michigan's governor, who says in her state, young people are among those fueling Michigan's latest surge. This infectious disease expert agrees. The majority of people going to hospitals, not just getting infected, going to hospitals are under 60, and many of them are between 30 and 20. So this is not what was happening before. It's a different virus, more transmissible, more lethal, and more dangerous to the young. Michigan, joined by New Jersey and New York on the list of states with the highest COVID infection rate per capita. Kansas, California, and Arkansas has the lowest as the race between vaccines and variants picks up speed. That was CNN's Polo Sandoval reporting. In observation of Easter, some businesses around San Antonio will be closed today. All Costco, HEB, Target, and Sam's Club stores will be closed today. Whataburger, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Family Dollar will be open. Six Flags is open today from 1030 this morning to 7 tonight. The San Antonio Zoo will also be open to visitors from 9 to 5. You can find a complete list of businesses open and closed today on KSAT.com. Well, the championship game is set for the women's NCAA tournament right here in San Antonio, Arizona. Taking on Stanford tonight at 5 o'clock. It has been a unique tournament to say the least. That is why leading up to the championship game, we are being joined by Mary Jaffet of San Antonio Sports Live and Leading SA. This morning at 8 a.m., Mary will join us to talk about how the tournament has gone from a logistics perspective, what it's meant for our local businesses, and could this set the stage for more events here in the Alamo City. If you have any questions you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Time now is 639, 58 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. Speaking of the tournament, an exciting day of college hoops and overtime buzzer beater deciding who's going to be in the championship game. We have the highlights and what comes next. And over the past few weeks, we've highlighted several books and authors from the San Antonio Book Festival after the break. Why authors say stories are best told through people and characters. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 58 degrees to start your Easter Sunday. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, tell you what you need to know for the rest of the day. Three books, three very different topics. Journalist Paula Ramos talked about Latinos in America defining their sense of community in her book, Finding Latinx. Someone defined to them what it meant to be American, right? Whether it was their boss, it was the government, um, society, someone told them what America looked like, what it meant to be American, and what the American dream was all about. The difference now is with this younger generation of Latinos, we are the ones that get to define what it means to be American and what it means to be American. Admiral James Stavridis created six characters to explore the possibility of a third world war with China in the year 2034. But despite the military influence, he says those characters drive the plot. Technology is not at the heart of this book. Um, this is a book about characters, about people. You don't have to be an expert to read the book, kind of the opposite. The book is written to be very approachable and to tell the story through these characters. And Kristen Hanna took us nearly 100 years into the past to write an American epic about the Dust Bowl through a woman's eyes. As we find ourselves sitting here in the middle of a pandemic, I think it's really important to be to be reminded um, that we are a tough people and you know we can do this, we'll come out on the other side. All of the authors I spoke to want to use their words to help us relate to one another and to help us define what it means to live in this country. My hope is this, and my hope is that some Latinos that 
have felt sort of misplaced or misunderstood can read that book and feel seen and then suddenly want to be part of this conversation or suddenly want to vote because now they understand that it matters or suddenly want to speak up because now they understand that their voice matters. And hopefully through these books, you can find your own voice in the United States. Jared Hoeing, KSAT 12 News. Well, right now you can read more about the authors on KSAT.com. You can also learn more about the all virtual book festival that's happening April 9th through 11th. All right, Sarah Spivey, how are we doing out there? Well, you can see that the roads here are a little damp, and that's because in the overnight hours we had some rain move through San Antonio, even a couple of rumbles of thunder. Perhaps you're still awake because of those rumbles of thunder, but just know that most of that rain has pushed on off to the east and we're still going to carry about a 20% chance for isolated rain throughout your Easter Sunday. But it's all right out there. We're looking at cloudy skies at the airport, 58 degrees, 56 in Kerrville, 55 in Rock Springs, 65 though, the warm spot in Del Rio, 65 in Catula, 56 in Pleasanton, and 55 in Gonzales. Here's a look at the radar right now. Yeah, you can see just a couple of uh, spotty showers uh, to talk about. First couple of ones are up in the Hill Country. Junction and Fredericksburg getting some good rain. This is going to push on off to the Austin metro area. Meanwhile, around Kerr County, a couple of flashes of lightning in western Kerr County. Hunt, Kerrville, Ingram, if you look out to the west, you might be able to see a few flashes of lightning. Some rainfall for those areas along I-10 between Kerrville and Comfort as well. And then right north of Pipe Creek and Bandera County, a shower is moving closer and closer to Bernie. So quick splash and dash shower for those in Bernie. Early Early this morning, just within the next 15 minutes or so. Meanwhile, we've got a shower just north of Canyon Lake, pushing on off toward Wimberley and the San Marcos area. These are again pretty isolated, one just south of Lavernia. And in Bear County right now, it's fairly quiet other than that road spray you may encounter if you're heading out for an early church service. So looking at the high res future cast, most of the rain today is going to be north of uh, Highway 90. And again, just a reminder that it'll be isolated, 20% chance for an isolated shower. Thunder is going to be hard to come by, but it is going to be possible in some of the stronger showers that develop uh, and will continue to carry that 20% chance for an isolated shower uh, after lunch as well. But looking at the high risk future cast for the afternoon, we are going to be seeing some peaks of sunshine in the afternoon as well. So for your Easter Sunday at 10, 20% chance for an isolated shower is still cloudy at noon. Again, an isolated shower is possible 68 around noon. And then with some sun in the afternoon, we'll warm up nicely to 75 degrees. Sun will set around 754 this evening and we'll have southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. So in that weather pattern, we do have that upper level low. That's what's bringing that rainfall across parts of the hill country right now that's going to continue to move on off to the east and what we'll see in its stead is a surface high pressure system that's going to turn around winds to the southeast and it's actually going to become pretty humid by Tuesday and Wednesday and speaking of Wednesday that's also when it's going to get very warm too so we're going to have the humidity and we're going to have the warmth it'll feel a lot like summer from Wednesday Thursday and Friday when we'll be near 90 degrees around San Antonio and across parts of the southwestern viewing area. We could be closer to 100, like closer to Del Rio, could see their first triple digit day if of this year so far. So it's going to get pretty warm pretty quickly, but we just have to get through uh, that small chance for rain this morning. Notice how in the next seven days we really don't have a good chance for rain, and that is unfortunate because it gets even drier in the summer months and drought conditions exist out there. So not looking good for our rain chances over the next seven days as temperatures warm up. Max and Sarah. Uh, Texas spring. 93, love it. <laughs> 648, 58 degrees out. A top Texas matchup and the second game. Remember the name Jalen Suggs. He's going to be the face of the sports world today. A phenomenal day for the final four. We'll have the details next. Good morning. Welcome back. Time to talk college hoops. So we're going to start with the Texas teams. Baylor men's team entering the afternoon with a chance to clinch the program's first championship game appearance since 1948. They did not waste any time jumping out to an early lead against Houston. Jared Butler catching fire back-to-back -back threes. 
Baylor would start off 33 to 17. They stay hot. Matthew Meyer drives inside, banks in the jumper. Baylor were going up 40 to 18. And the closing second and a half, Davion Mitchell drilling the triple and the Bears rolling into halftime, a commanding 45-20 lead. Baylor hit eight threes in the first half alone. Houston does get back into it in the second half, but Baylor Baylor's never letting off the gas. Baylor cruising into the title game 78 to 59 a great start and uh, guys really playing with poise sharing the ball making extra passes um, but the big the big thing was uh, um, we really guarded first half really defended well rebounded well and we're all you know connected and we're all united it's hard for anybody to beat us and um, we got all a lot of guys who would start on other teams um, division one easily you know they got a lot of pros and um, I think that's why we're so good you know that's why we're making it to the national championship game there we go. All right, second Final Four matchup of the game. Number one, Gonzaga. Number 11, UCLA. This one went the distance. And then some both teams tied at 81 at the end of regulation. So that means we go to OT. Gonzaga taking the charge. Andrew Nemhard knocking down the step back three. The Bulldogs lead 90 to 85, but the Bruins respond. Johnny Juzang driving inside, misses, gets his own rebound, tips it in, tying the game 90 all. And this is it. Gonzaga not calling a timeout. Jalen Suggs. For the win at the buzzer, banks it in a remarkable game winner. Gonzaga keeping their perfect season alive. They are heading to the championship game 93-90 in overtime, and that is the play of the weekend. That is the play that people are going to be talking about. So this is it. This is the matchup. Baylor Bears, Gonzaga Bulldogs, Monday, 8 p.m. And, of course, we have the women's tournament right here in San Antonio. We have the number three Arizona Wildcats, number one Stanford Cardinal, that is this evening, 5 p.m., right here at home at the Alamo Dome. Who's winning? Sanford. And then for the men? Gonzaga. Wow, there we go. Uh, I know. <laughs> All right, 654, 58 degrees now. We'll be right back. On the city's southwest side, a family's home is destroyed after flames broke out early this morning. I spoke to Battalion Chief Brad May. He tells me more than a dozen fire units responded to the 5900 block of Beausprit again around 4 this morning. There was no way firefighters could actually make it inside the home to try to save anything. Unfortunately, this home has been deemed a total loss by fire crews this morning. And as you may be able to see, it's really the roof that's most damage that was completely destroyed. This home, again, a total damage. We know four people were inside, two adults, two children. They were able to make it out safely without any injury. However, they are mourning the loss of a family pet. This morning, firefighters say they're going to be monitoring monitoring the area for any hot spots. And as of now, there isn't any foul play suspected and damages are estimated to be at about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Reporting from the city southwest side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, one Florida county under a state of emergency after a leak at a wastewater storage pond. Officials say could soon collapse, asking locals to evacuate the warning this morning. Plus, travel numbers on the rise this holiday weekend as the CDC eases travel guidelines despite COVID cases increasing in nearly half the country. And rapper DMX hospitalized after a heart attack, his condition and the outpouring of support. It's all ahead here on GMA. Look at the radar right now and you can see that there is one storm in western Kirk County that is heading to the south and to the east. So I wouldn't be surprised if areas like Bandera hear some thunder and see some lightning over the next uh, couple of hours. Again, that's this uh, storm right here. Elsewhere, we're seeing some light rain showers out near Bernie and near Canyon Lake too. And so today for your Easter Sunday, we are going to carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower, especially during the first part of the day here. We'll have cloudy skies until the afternoon when we'll see a few breaks in the clouds, some sun, a high temperature of 75. I don't want you to be scared off by the 20% chance for an isolated shower. Most of us are going to miss out on the rain completely today and most Easter egg hunts should go totally fine without a hitch. Uh, and then looking ahead to the week, we're going to really start a quick warming trend. By Wednesday, we'll be in the 90s. And on top of that, it's also going to be pretty muggy too. Dew points will be getting up into the 60s. And so we might have to start talking about heat index values, Sarah and Max, by the middle of the week because of just how warm and humid it is going to be. Now, how much do we need rain right now? 
We desperately need it. We're under drought conditions, mm. and these splash and dash quick showers are not going to do anything to help us out. We've only seen about five hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport this wow. weekend. There's Bobby. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour long break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Happy Easter. Hey. We are seeing a few showers and even a rumble of thunder or two in the hill country. Let's go ahead and focus on that. In western Kirk County, you can see some flashes of lightning and we're also seeing a shower in Bernie. This is one of the reasons why we're going to carry a 20% chance for isolated rain today. A shower is moving through the rim area in Leon Springs as we uh, speak. Now it will not be a washout today by any means. In fact, most of us will miss out on the rain completely in the afternoon. Some sun 75. Happy Easter Sunday to you. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. As you can see, we do have a few showers and even a rumble of thunder or two on the radar this morning, but I don't want you to think that Easter itself is going to be a washout. We're going to carry about a 20% chance for an isolated shower throughout the day. That's about it. Uh, but again, there is that storm uh, in western Kirk County just producing a few flashes of lightning just to the west of Hunt and Ingram about to cross 39. We're also seeing some showers near the Bernie area and also near Fair Oaks Ranch, Leon Springs pushing out to Stone Oak here. So unless you have some uh, pre sunrise Easter egg hunts, <laughs> I really wouldn't worry too much about it being interrupted uh, today. We are again going to carry that 20% chance for an isolated shower. So that is possible, especially in the morning hours. But in the afternoon, we'll see some sun 75 degrees southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. If you happen to come across the shower, bring up the case out weather app some rain out there, a couple of isolated showers on the north side approaching the Stone Oak area. Meanwhile, a storm on the western part of Kerr County. Now our rain chance today, only 20% for an isolated shower. Uh, we will be seeing some sun in the afternoon, 75. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, Easter church services in the Alamo City, our Elisa Brera will be live with what you need to know if you plan to go in person. Plus, the women's NCAA tournament is taking place this evening in just a few minutes. We're talking to Mary Jaffet of San Antonio Sports in our leading essay segment with what the event means for our city. And taking a live look out there, not exactly a picture perfect start to Easter Sunday, but what does the rest of the day, what does the rest of the week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Easter Sunday, April 4th. Look at this. Yeah, we have some cascarones behind us. There we go. And we might have found some cascarones hidden. I did. Hidden in our I newsroom. I found some hidden cascarones. Look at our very own Easter bunny. From two fiestas ago <laughs> in my drawer, and I found three of them. One, two, three. We'll have to see when we decide to surprise Max this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Outside, though, as Max was mentioning, it is kind of damp and gray out there this morning. 58 degrees at the airport, 56 in Kerrville. It's 55 in Rock Springs, a warmer 65 in Del Rio. Closer view here, uh, 54 at Bernie Stage Airfield and 57 in New Braunfels. We have had areas of rain in the overnight hours. We had a thunderstorm move through San Antonio. You may have been woken up right at around 2 o'clock in the morning. It was a very weak thunderstorm and just dropped about six hundredth of an inch of rainfall at the airport overnight. Uh, and as you can see, really all we're left with is a, a few isolated showers, even an isolated thunderstorm in western Kirk County that is generally moving to the east. So Hunt and Ingram, you may be able to see a few flashes of lightning early this morning. Meanwhile, an isolated shower near Timberwood Park in Bulverde along 281 and approaching that I-10 corridor as you're heading into uh, Kendall County there between Bernie and Leon Springs. But that's about it for the rain right now. And honestly, I have to carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower this morning. But for the vast majority of your Easter Sunday, we're not going to see a washout. It'll still be a nice Easter Sunday, just a little cloudy to start. We will see some sun in the afternoon, 75 degrees for the high southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, I'll show you an updated look at the radar and we'll talk about a big warm up in our future. We're talking temperatures in the 90s already in April. Sarah and Max back to you. Thank you, Sarah. The Archdiocese of San Antonio easing COVID restrictions just in time for Easter.
The announcement came earlier this week as Catholic churches across the area prepare for Easter masses and celebrations. Lisa Barra joining us live outside San Fernando Cathedral with more on what changes people can expect if you are going to church in person today. Good morning. Well, total complete changes. I remember being here last year and it was a bit of a struggle because not a person was in sight and really even the streets felt a little eerie because we were just at the beginning of all this COVID-19 pandemic. Last year, churches didn't have any Easter services, but things are much different this morning already. Although live streaming is still an option for a lot of churches, many are expecting a large number of in-person parishioners today. The Archdiocese of San Antonio announced churches will open all pews and reduce social distancing requirements from six feet to three feet. But face masks are still required and there will be thorough cleaning throughout each church. And of course, sanitation options like hand sanitizer will still be made available. We know that priests must still wear a mask when giving communion and will continue to sanitize their hands before and after giving communion. And Spanish Mass started right at 8 a.m., so just four minutes ago here at San Fernando Cathedral. And from what I've been able to see, a pretty steady crowd went in, all wearing masks. And one thing that you should expect if you're going to in-person uh, church today is that you still do have to wear a face mask and temperature checks will be uh, will be underway at the door. Um, and already here at San Fernando Cathedral, I peeked over and from the first pew all the way to the back, I've seen at least two, three people per pew. So again, they are reducing those social distancing measures down to three feet, but masks will still be required. Reporting live from downtown, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New this morning, San Antonio police tell us a man is dead after losing control of his vehicle and crashing into a tree. Take a look. This happened around 2.30 this morning. This is the 11,200 block of Apple White Road. Police tell us the driver pronounced dead on the scene. A woman in her late teens in the passenger seat taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Police right now believe speed was a factor. A family on the southwest side has been forced out of their home after a fire broke out early this morning. San Antonio fire crews say it started at 4 o'clock this morning in the 5900 block of Bowsprit near Old Pearsall Road. They say a family of four was inside at the time, but they were able to make it out safely. Unfortunately, their small dog did not make it. The San Antonio Fire Department says the home is a total loss with damages estimated at $150,000. Arson is investigating the cause. And we have new details in the investigation of the person who was shot and killed on the city's south side Friday evening. Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identifying the victim as 41-year-old man, but we still do not know his exact name until his next of kin has been notified. As of now, San Antonio police telling us they have arrested the suspect, 28-year-old Raymond Hernandez. He is now facing a murder charge. Now, the shooting happened just before 10 on Friday on West Bates Boulevard. Police tell us they got a call from a neighbor who said someone had been shot next door when they arrived. That victim already dead inside the home. The neighbor gave police a description of Hernandez, who was found several blocks away with a handgun. Police say Hernandez and the victim had been arguing before shots were fired. In your latest news, San Antonio police are still on the lookout for the person who shot at two people inside an apartment over the weekend. This happened just after 10 p.m. on Friday on Sandmeyer Street. When officers arrived there, they found a man with several gunshot wounds and a woman who was unharmed. The man was taken to the hospital and police say he had life-threatening injuries. No word on a suspect description at this time. On the vaccine front this morning, the Department of State Health Services tells us Texas is expected to get an additional 2.5 million doses of the vaccine next week. Here's how the vaccine allocation breaks down for Bear County. Metro Health will be getting 300 doses of Moderna, more than 12,000 doses of Pfizer, and 6,000 doses of Johnson & Johnson. University Health will be getting more than 19,000 doses of Pfizer, and WellMed will have more than 7,000 doses of Pfizer. The federal government is directing Johnson & Johnson to take over vaccine production at a Baltimore plant that spoiled 15 million vaccine doses. J&J &J is promising to make up the shortage quickly, but federal officials want to make sure it doesn't happen again. 
The company subcontracted vaccine production to the Emergent Biosolutions Bayview facility, which allegedly made the quality control mistake. Emergent was also making vaccines for AstraZeneca. Now the Department of Health and Human Services is ordering that the AstraZeneca vaccine production be moved to another plant. We know the women's NCAA tournament is here in San Antonio and tonight is the big game. The championship between Arizona and Stanford, the culmination of years of hard work and the pinnacle of a unique season. And it's not only been a unique season, but also a unique tournament. That is why Mary Jaffet is joining us in today's leading essay segment. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us Easter Sunday morning. So we'll get right to the questions. How has the tournament gone so far from a logistical perspective? Well, it's not like nothing we've ever seen before, of course. I mean, San Antonio is well versed in hosting men's and women's Final Fours, but this has been something unusual to say the least. I mean, it wasn't, you have to keep in mind, it wasn't until February that we knew we would be hosting all 64 teams, not just the Final Four. And so it was a mad sprint to, to get everything organized and in line. And it's been different in every way, but in, in, many ways it's been very much the same when our team rallies our city rallies we do a, a great job and and that's come through what has made this event so unique for san antonio well of course you know the pandemic of you know changed everything so the fact that the ncaa decided in february to bring the entire tournament to san antonio was uh, honestly a real boon for our economy because it's about a $27.2 million economic impact. That's 35,000 hotel room nights, which is tremendous for our devastated hospitality industry. But in every other way, it changed. We Our volunteers weren't working directly with crowds and student athletes because the student athletes were in a controlled environment, but we changed. so we pivoted to having a virtual team host program. So we were uh, tending to their needs as we always would, but it was through uh, a network of people who were running around the community, getting what the, the student athletes needed and delivering it to the front door of a hotel rather than working directly with the student athletes. So that's just one example, but there's been so many. Now, speaking of the student athletes, obviously it'll bump in the road in the beginning. Social media went crazy when there were pictures of the weight room disparity between the men's and the women's tournament. Can you guys talk about that? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, obviously. I mean, it's the 800-pound gorilla in the room, certainly. And the NCAA owned it. They, they took full responsibility, and it is an ongoing issue, and it's not going to be over just because the tournament is over tonight. So um, they're... they're reviewing everything. I know that there's a lot of conversation within the NCAA community as there should be. But here in San Antonio, we pivoted on a dime. I mean, when the NCAA said, okay, we need more equipment in the exercise room, we called on our great friends at the YMCA and they had it outfitted overnight beautifully. And every venue that we were at, remember we were, because we brought the whole tournament here, we were at five different venues everything culminated in the Alamo Dome, but it started at UT Austin, at Texas State, UTSA, St. Mary's, and the Alamo Dome. And Mary, last question. Do you think this, this tournament from this year sets up San Antonio well for future events? I think the NCAA on some level was relieved to be able to bring this tournament to San Antonio that we were already going to be hosting the Final Four was great because we are an experienced city. Our staff is experienced, our volunteers are experienced, our city government, our leading officials, we know how to do these events and we were the right city to host this and glad to be able to have the opportunity to do so. We're going to be hosting the men's final four in 2025. That's already been awarded and heaven help us. I, you know, it's going to look like a real, you know, a normal final four uh, and not quite like this one, but Yes, we're in a great situation. San Antonio Sports and our local organizing committee, this is what we do. We bring people together and make events happen. And so, yeah, we're in great shape. All right, Mary, thank you so much. This is what we do. I love it. 
Time now is 8 12 58 degrees out. Well still ahead a second trailer for the upcoming Suicide Squad film is out less than a week after the first trailer was released. Why this one contains less violence. And go Spurs go 133 points another overtime game but it was not enough. We're going to explain. And a new treat for your favorite pup after the break where you can get one of the two dollar pupparitas. Yeah. That's a thing. Oh, Scooby's excited. And taking a live look out there. 58 degrees. What is the rest of your Easter Sunday? What does this work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. So dog parents can now rejoice and enjoy a special treat with their four legged friends. Thanks to a local restaurant. Pretty excited this week. LaGloria announced it'll be adding paparitas to its menu. The paparita is a non alcoholic drink made of dog friendly chicken broth over ice. The drink is $2 each and all the proceeds from the paparitas will be donated to the cannoli fund. The cannoli fund is an all volunteer nonprofit that supports King William and Lavaca residents who take care of rescued animals. You can learn more about the nonprofit on ksat.com. Sarah, oh. do you think Scooby Absolutely. Your dog would love a paparita? He like inhales any <laughs> treat, <laughs> food, anything. I gave him they, they make non-alcoholic beer for dogs. Oh. He inhaled Whoa. that. So he'll be there. All right. <laughs> All right. Grab a Scooby one and grab one for sister. Yep. Well. <laughs> okay, so we just got the pollen count in. It's not very pretty this Easter Sunday. In fact, in spite of the spotty rain over the last few days, oak has risen even higher. It's at its highest levels so far this season. Oak is at 12,030 pollen grains per cubic meter of air. And so I'm feeling it. I'm sure you're feeling it at home as well. And you can actually see the oak falling from the trees, the oak pollen falling from the trees. Uh, mold is also elevated. It's moderate today. Thankfully, pine, mulberry, and hackberry are all low. Outside right now, the roads are a little damp in spots because of some overnight showers and storms. It's 58 degrees at the airport and cloudy. The skies, they really do look like they want to rain, don't they? But in fact, rain is going to be few and far between uh, for this Easter Sunday, which is good news for some of us, especially those of us who uh, are going to enjoy watching some kids do some Easter egg hunts and putting on Easter egg hunts. It's, it's going to be nice enough that most of us shouldn't have any kind of interruptions. There will be a couple of spotty showers, though, here and there this morning. 56 in Kerrville, a cool 55 in Comfort, 54 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 59 in Hondo, 59 at Stinson and 55 in Seguin. As I mentioned, there are a few spotty showers. There was even a storm up in Kerr County that's not really producing any lightning at the moment, but it may pulse up again and produce a few flashes of lightning. This is just south of Hunt, just south of Ingram and just to the west of Kerrville, uh, but Kerrville is currently getting some light rain as well. Speaking of light rain, we're seeing a light rain shower just to the east of I-10 uh, in northern Bear County there for some of those Fair Oaks communities. And we're also seeing uh, a couple of passing showers out near Timberwood Park and Bulverde too. Similar story up near Canyon Lake and Fisher and into uh, Comal County and Guadalupe counties. We're also seeing a few isolated showers there. Similar story for Gonzalez County and just to the east of the Nixon Smiley area. So Hallettsville, you're probably going to get a quick splash and dash shower this morning as well. This is all right around an area of low pressure uh, that's uh, currently up to our north. So areas like Colleen and Waco, they have a much better chance at seeing rain than us here in San Antonio, but we are going to carry again a 20% chance for an isolated pop up shower throughout the day, especially this morning and especially north of Highway 90. Right around noon will still be fairly cloudy, uh, but into the afternoon we'll have peaks of sunshine and it'll be a nice and comfortable afternoon. High temperatures in the mid 70s generally for all of us, upper 70s for Del Rio, uh, 78 for Carrizo Springs, 81 in Laredo, right around 75 around that I 35 corridor from New Braunfels down to San Antonio and Pleasanton. Then we're going to see our humidity increase pretty quickly. It's going to be nice and pleasant with low humidity today in the afternoon, but by Tuesday we'll see our dew points get up into the 60s, close to 70 degrees by Friday. And what that means is you will feel the humidity this week on top of higher humidity 
temperatures are going to be on the rise as well. We're going to be close to 90 degrees by Wednesday. Probably going to have to talk about a heat index on Wednesday and Thursday. So just a reminder today, Easter Sunday should be pretty nice for everyone out there. Just a couple of splash and dash showers in some places, uh, but odds are you will not see any rain at your house of uh, 75 for the high temperature with some sun in the afternoon. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and again, it's going to get warm. Look at those high temperatures in the middle of the week. Very, very hot. And in fact, um, coming up in the next forecast, I'm going to have a rundown of an Easter egg forecast of when's the best time to enjoy some Easter egg hunts today. All right. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 59 <laughs> degrees out. Cascarona. All right, Jerry Seinfeld is back to performing in front of a live, a live audience who the comedian opened for this weekend in New York City. And Suicide Squad releasing a trailer that is not rated R when you can expect to watch the film on the big screen. Welcome back, a new Suicide Squad trailer you can show your kids is out. That's right, so director James Gunn released a second trailer for the upcoming film that contains less violence than the R-rated version he premiered less than a week ago. The producer has called the movie a total reboot of the franchise for the film with the same name that came out in 2016. Gunn made a name for himself in the superhero genre after writing and directing Guardians of the Galaxy. Warner Brothers hopes he can recreate some of the same magic he brought Marvel's characters on the silver screen to the company's roster from competing DC Comics. It's not a defection for Gunn. He's still tied to the third installment of the Guardians of the Galaxy series, which is likely slated for a 2023 release. His Suicide Squad entry is scheduled to hit theaters and HBO Max much sooner on August 6th. I like the original Suicide Squad, but I just like Will Smith. I never saw it. What? It's just a marvel. Well, don't worry. You got John Cena in this one, so you're good to go. Ooh. A <laughs> A26. Oh, for a second year in a row, a famous Easter egg event outside the White House has been canceled. Still ahead, how you can still participate virtually this year. And new details emerging about the suspect in the deadly attack at the Capitol. We have the details. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Easter Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Acosta. It is April 4th. It's Easter. There we go. A lot of people out and about today. The egg with the egg extravaganza. The egg extravaganza. There we Easter go. Egg hunts, there barbecues. Hopefully everyone's being safe still. I was going to say, Sarah, what can we expect out there, though? Well, there are a few splash and dash quick showers out there, but it is not going to be a washout of an Easter Sunday, and I'm happy to report that. I've got my friend here, the Easter Bunny. He's going to help me out with an Easter egg hunt forecast. <laughs> if you want to uh, make sure to go Easter egg hunting today, just know that if you go this morning or if the kids go this morning, there is a small chance 20% for a quick splash and dash shower, but there's going to be a lot less of a chance for rain in the afternoon. 75 for the high temperature. It's cloudy now, but we will see some sun in the afternoon. Thanks, little guy. You did a great job. Okay, on the radar, we do have some of those showers that are showing up. Overnight, we had a storm move through San Antonio. It might have woken you up. It was just a very brief storm. Not severe. It did drop about six hundredths of an inch of rainfall at the airport, which is something. Up in Kerr County, though, that's where most of the rain is right now in our viewing area, just to the west of Kerrville, just to the west of Hunt and Ingram. No flashes of lightning with this um, anymore. There were some flashes of lightning earlier. And then out near Timberwood Park, Bulverde, we do have some showers there just to the north of Stone Oak along 281 and into uh, Comal County near Canyon Lake near New Braunfels and near Seguin in Guadalupe County. But again, these are just a few showers that are possible this morning in the afternoon. It should be nice and comfortable and coming up in the forecast, though, I'll show you something that won't be so comfortable next week's high temperatures. I'll have a look ahead coming up, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, it's been two years since cyclist Tito Bradshaw was killed in the 1900 block of East Houston Street by a woman police say was under the influence of alcohol. That woman has since been out free on bail and awaiting trial, the pandemic prolonging a set date. Jennifer Pena, the mother 
of Tito Bradshaw's son says it's been an excruciating two years since Bradshaw was struck by Linda Collier Mason. Mason was arrested at the scene of suspicion of intoxication assault, but that charge was later upgraded to intoxication manslaughter slaughter once Bradshaw died from his injuries. Bradshaw's family is now hopeful that a trial could start as soon as next month. I know that it's set for May, so if this could be just be done in May, you know, that would bring us some relief, some closure that, you know, she's behind bars and she's not out possibly drinking and driving. Bradshaw says they've done everything they can to stay up to speed on the status of Mason's case. With all Bear County courts are scheduled to reopen tomorrow, Bradshaw's family hopes justice will finally be served. Now to a warning, the Dimmit County Sheriff's Office saying there is a scam going around related to one of their wounded deputies. The Sheriff's Office took to social media to let people know about it. The scam asking for donations for Deputy Garcia. Garcia was shot while trying to make a traffic stop near Big Wells. Transported to San Antonio, he is expected to make a full recovery. Garcia's family is not asking for any donations because medical expenses have been taken care of. In your morning headlines, the officer injured during the recent attack on the Capitol was released from the hospital overnight. This as we learn more about the suspect and tributes pour in for the police officer who was killed. ABC's Faith Abube has more from Washington. Cheers at a Washington, D.C. hospital as Ken Shaver, the second Capitol Police officer struck by a car on Friday, leaves to applause from his fellow officers. Getting out of his wheelchair and walking to the car. And now the Capitol Police Union with an urgent plea asking lawmakers to ramp up security after the latest deadly attack at the U.S. Capitol. The union chairman saying officers are reeling and morale is rapidly approaching crisis levels. Officer Billy Evans, a father of two, was the second Capitol Police officer to die in the line of duty this year after being struck by a car that crashed into a checkpoint. Billy died a hero's death and uh, it wasn't something he was looking for and we certainly would much rather have him with us. Police and the FBI still piecing together the suspect, Noah Green's final days. Reports say the 25-year-old football player turned accused killer was unraveling. His brother telling the Washington Post, Green slid into deep religiousness and paranoia, leaving family and friends concerned about his mental state. He also reportedly battled drug addiction and suicidal thoughts. You can't really stop people like that if you don't know they're going to do it. And that's the real big concern for law enforcement. With the force understaffed by more than 200 officers, the police union says Capitol Police are at a breaking point. It's very difficult. You reach a fatigue factor. And whatever the solution is for security on Capitol grounds, the police union making it clear they want their officers to be part of that decision making. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Also in your morning headline, 17 people are missing in Indonesia after authorities there say a cargo ship crashed into a fishing boat. The boat was reportedly carrying a total of 32 people off the main island of Java late yesterday. 15 people were rescued. Local fishermen helped the Navy search to search for those others. The cargo ship, which was loaded with crude oil, has now been docked after its propeller got caught in the fishing boat's net. And back here in the United States, Florida's governor has declared a state of emergency after a significant leak at a large storage pond of wastewater, and it's threatened to flood roads and burst the system that stores polluted waters. Officials in Florida evacuating more than 300 homes and an entire highway yesterday. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection says a break was detected in one of the walls of the pond, holding millions of gallons of water that contained phosphorus and nitrogen from an old phosphate plant. Officials say the most pressing concern is that the water could flood the area. Lori Laughlin's husband, Massimo, Massimo Giannulli, has been released from prison early after serving nearly five months behind bars. According to Federal Bureau of Prison Records, he has been moved out of the correctional facility in Southern California. The fashion designer is now under supervised release, which could mean home confinement or transfer to a halfway house. Your Sunday errands may have to wait until tomorrow as some businesses around San Antonio will be closed today in observation of Easter. Lisa Barra joining us live downtown with more on what's open and what's not. Good morning, Lisa. 
Good morning. Well, let's start off with who is giving their employees the day off. On that short list, really, is HEB, Costco, Sam's Club, and Target. But then there are all the other businesses, including Whataburger, that are going to be open. But if you have family in, in town or just want to spend the day doing something fun, take a look on your screen. These are the entertainment venues available, uh, perhaps after you go to church or uh, do your egg hunt. That's Legoland, Six Flags, The Zoo, and SeaWorld. Those are all opening today. And if you have some shopping to do, outdoor stores, including Academy and Bass Pro Shops, are open for business. CBS, IKEA, and Walmart are also open. You can head over to ksat.com for that full list. And if you don't want to cook today or just want to grab a bite or dessert, here's some options to keep in mind. We know La Gloria, Bistro 09, Trader Joe's, are open. Also on that list is good Texas Old Faithful Water Burger. But if you want something sweet like a cheesecake, that's off of Broadway. They have they'll be open today until about 8 p.m. and they have a very extra special pastry. It's a cheesecake with carrot cake and then cheesecake on top. It looks delicious, and then it obviously goes in theme. So that one's more for our producer, Roslyn. I know she loves, she's a foodie, so maybe y'all can go check that out today. Reporting live from downtown, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you, Alicia. Well, Pope Francis is urging the community to not lose hope through the continued dark months of the pandemic. Pope Francis made the appeal for hope as he celebrated a scaled back Easter vigil service in St. Peter's Basilica yesterday due to social distancing norms. Only about 200 masked people were allowed to attend the mass, which marks the period between Christ's crucifixion and his joyous resurrection on Easter Sunday. And for the second year in a row, a lot of Easter being celebrated virtually in Washington. Instead of the famous Easter egg rollout outside the White House, there is a virtual scavenger hunt online. Whitehouse.gov, you can also find downloadable Easter Bunny coloring pages and a digital jigsaw puzzle. New York has canceled its famous Fifth Avenue Easter Parade too. Instead, there is a virtual Easter bonnet social media contest. You can participate with your own holiday fashion using the hashtag Easter on Fifth. I hope you partake. Uh, you know, Easter candy, mm. I love Easter. Mm -hmm. The Easter candy, not quite as good what? as Halloween candy. Well, okay, well, the apples the hollow, and oranges. The hollow bunnies, the peeps, you know. I'm in on peeps. All right, 839, <laughs> 56 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. A tough night for the silver and black. Let's see if we can bring it back to the win column. We'll explain. Plus the latest involving DMX after reports of an alleged drug overdose this week. What his lawyer is saying about the rapper's current condition. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, if you have any especially fun I, plans, there we go. Are we expecting excellent, excellent weather? There we we are expecting <laughs> some things. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in a little bit. Biden goes big, but his infrastructure plan to rebuild America now getting heat from all sides. What will it mean for the economy and American families? Today, the president's point man, Pete Buttigieg, plus the powerhouse roundtable on ABC's This Week with George. In your morning spotlight, DMX's longtime New York-based lawyer Murray Richmond says the rapper was on life support last night. Richmond says the artist had a heart attack. He could not confirm reports that DMX allegedly overdosed on drugs and was not sure what caused the heart attack. DMX made a splash in rap music in 1988 with his first studio album called It's Dark and Hell is Hot, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. Legendary comedian Jerry Seinfeld performed in front of a live audience in New York City this weekend for the first time since the start of the pandemic. He opened at the Gotham Comedy Club, which has been closed for over a year, along with all of New York's live venues since March of 2020. Seinfeld announced the surprise performance on Twitter, proclaiming NYC lives. The comedian has been a notable supporter of New York City, fighting naysayers who say the city is dead as a result of the pandemic. Model Chrissy Teigen and her two children with singer-actor John Legend are featured on the new cover of People's Beautiful Issue. Speaking to the magazine, Teigen discussed various topics, including parenting and her outlook on life. 
She also talked about the family's heartbreaking loss of son Jack last year due to pregnancy complications. Tegan and Legend got married in 2013 after meeting on the set of one of his music videos seven years earlier. Spurs after taking a one day break, the San Antonio Spurs hitting the court back here at home, taking on the Indiana Pacers for all the highlights. Spurs did a lot. They scored a lot, a lot of good overall team movement, but this is going to be their second straight loss in overtime. Two and six so far in their nine game homestand. DeMar DeRozan, 25 points, his 450th career game with at least 20. DeJounte Murray and Keldon Johnson each racking up 20, and Derek White adding in 18. San Antonio outscored Indiana 5-0 in the final two minutes, forcing overtime. San Antonio would cut Indiana's lead 126-125 with 50 seconds. There we go. DeMar DeRozan made one of the two free throws to tie the game, missed an 18-footer at the close of regulation. The Pacers made a quick comeback and finished off the game. T.J. McConnell right there, 139-133. This first second straight overtime loss, but don't worry. We got another one loaded up for you guys. San Antonio hosting the Cavaliers tomorrow, 6 o'clock, right here at home, AT&T Center. Do you want to shake? There we go. We I have, really want to crack this. Then only, go for it. We only have, <laughs> each have one. So it's, I feel it. like a All child you. being Let's like, see it. You, no, not yet. I'm, I'm, I've been told to we're wait. Gonna wait. We're mm -hmm. going to wait to the end wait. of the show. Okay. But the anticipation is building. It's I building. See that. Unfortunately, Max, watch though, out, Max. Unfortunately, oak pollen is also building mm. out there. <laughs> We've got the pollen count in for the day. It's not a pretty sight. In spite of the spotty rain over the last several days, uh, last couple days rather, uh, oak is very high. In fact, it's at its highest that it's been all season. Twelve thousand pollen grains per cubic meter of air out there. Mold is also moderate uh, with pine and mulberry and hackberry being low as well. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with uh, live cam. We've got 58 degrees at the airport and uh, it is cloudy at the airport right now uh, and we have had some rain uh, overnight. We had about six hundredths of an inch of rainfall uh, with a passing thunderstorm. But as you can see outside now, just pretty cloudy. Those clouds look like they want to rain, but we're not going to see a ton of run rain today. And you know what? It is Easter Sunday. A lot of people are outside grilling, enjoying some uh, food outside and some egg hunts. So if the rain could hold off for the day, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And we really only have a 20% chance for isolated showers. It's in the 50s right now, so on the cool side, definitely sweater weather early this morning. And you can see where all the rain is right now to the north of San Antonio. In the hill country, we're seeing plenty of showers in Kerr County out near Mountain Home, close to that I-10 corridor. And then closer to Kerrville, you can see some showers between Kerrville and Center point and just to the south of Hunt and Ingram. These are gradually moving to the east. So Kerrville, you'll probably have a little bit rainier of an Easter Sunday than us here in San Antonio because this is what we're dealing with closer to San Antonio. Just some spotty showers uh, east of Bulverde, east of Timberwood Park, right around Garden Ridge, a spotty shower at the moment and near Marion in Guadalupe County. Seeing some showers in northern DeWitt County pushing into Lavaca County. So Hallettsville, you're probably going to get a quick splash and dash shower here over the next about a couple of hours or so, uh, but most of the rain is going to be few and far between. Again, only a 20% chance for an isolated shower. It will not be a washout of an Easter by any means here in San Antonio. Better rain chances up near Waco and Colleen area as well as Austin. Looking at the future cast, it's going to stay cloudy for most of the day, but a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, and so that means we'll warm up pretty nicely. So again, Isolated rain is the best we can do this morning uh, and we'll stay cloudy until about lunch and then in the afternoon breaks in the cloud cover 75 for the high southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Sun will set tonight right at around 754. Looking at the wider picture, the upper level low is right here bringing that rain to central Texas and us a few spotty showers, but then our attention is going to turn to this big high pressure system, which is going to turn our winds around to the southeast and make it pretty breezy by about Tuesday and Wednesday. And that's going to bring in that Gulf of Mexico humidity and you'll really feel the humidity by Wednesday 
and you'll feel the heat by Wednesday too. Wednesday and Thursday, our high temperatures will be near 90 degrees in this upcoming week, so it is going to be very warm, borderline even hot with a heat index into uh, the picture by the middle of the week as well. So yes, we have to talk about a heat index in April. Go for it. You hear that, Max? I hear it, and I see it too. Did you put enough hairspray in today? Never enough. <laughs> 850, 59 degrees out. Well, a new generation of is defining for themselves what it means to be Latino and American. One of those definitions is the controversial term Latinx. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're hearing how one author says it forces people to open their eyes in a way they haven't had to. And take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, four, six, seven. Fireball, four. Daily, four, three, four, four. Hopefully, you like the number four. Nine, fireball, three. Cash five, 11, 14, 19, 20, 24. Texas lotto, four, seven, 23, 28, 34, 39. And Powerball, one, 12, 17, 39, 53. Powerball, five. Power play, two. And the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police say a man is dead after losing control of his vehicle and crashing into a tree. Right now we know it's happened around 2.30 this morning in the 11,200 block of Apple White Road. Police say the driver pronounced dead at the scene, a woman in her late teens in the passenger seat taken to University Hospital. They're believed to be in critical condition. Police believe speed was a factor in the crash. And just a reminder in the pollen count, kind of not such great news mm. that oak is very high past 12,000. Mold is moderate at 550. We do have some rain in the hill country near Kerrville and in parts of Kendall County. We're going to carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower today in the morning hours, especially. And then in the afternoon, we'll be warming up to 75 coming up in the week ahead. Ooh, it's going to be hot 90 degrees for the high temperature by Wednesday. Some areas on Thursday in our KSAT 12 viewing area could reach the triple digits. Whoa. One last thing before we go. We've been waiting all morning to do <laughs> this. Wow. Happy Easter! Wow, that one hurt my hand. Have a great <laughs> Easter Sunday. Wishing happy and healthy to everyone. Bye, guys. This is my